By the mid-1980s, it was obvious that car buyers of every age wanted a top quality sound system in their wheels. But for some reason, the car makers had dealt themselves out of the market. The factory sound systems were generally overpriced, and they sounded terrible. The only place to go for good sound was the aftermarket. But finally, after losing millions in option list profits, Detroit got a clue. They saw their, their profits or possible profits going to aftermarket. You started seeing the dashboards of these vehicles being changed in such a way that it was more and more difficult to replace the factory car stereo system with an aftermarket system. A lot of large companies have been doing OEM stereos for these uh, manufacturers. I mean, you remember the Bose stuff, you remember the, the Infinity sound systems. They, they did a nice partnership with some of these guys. In 1984, General Motors brought out some truly fine sound from its own AC Delco division and the Bose company. Not to be outdone, Ford teamed up with JBL and Chrysler joined forces with Infinity to produce their own premium sound systems, named appropriately the Chrysler Infinity System. Meanwhile, another format revolution was in the making, and this one would unseat the cassette tape as the king of pre-recorded music, the compact disc. CDs ushered in a whole new wave of incredible sound, and at the same time, a number of problems that had plagued car tape systems for decades just went away. The big change was the compact disc. The compact disc, it, not only did it give us the dynamic range, which had been missing in all of the other formats, and it gave us the frequency response, but you didn't have the degradation in sound quality that you get with a, a tape medium. Plus, to me, the, the most the best part of all is you had the random access capability. You can program your deck so it'll only play the tracks you want. You can have it shuffle the sound, the songs, so that you only you don't have to listen to the same songs in a certain preset order. Even though the CD was a far superior format to anything that had come before it, the early units still had to overcome some negatives, like skipping when the car went over bumps. But none of this mattered to road-going audiophiles, who wasted no time putting head-end units in their dashes, CD changers in the trunk, and even more amplifiers and speakers anywhere they'd fit. Once again, this game of audio leapfrog left Detroit in the dust. But now they hurried to catch up with some truly fine built-in systems. The first of this new generation of systems was Ford's Mach 460, offered in the 1994 Mustangs and later in other models. GM countered in 1996 with their Monsoon system, a 500-watt monster It was an unusual layout featuring dual subwoofers and six speakers being powered by one amplifier. Ford once again upped the ante in 2002 with the Mach 1000 with, you guessed it, 1000 total watts of power. This ground shaker is similar to the Mach 460, but the added punch comes from two 10-inch sealed subwoofer enclosures and four additional subwoofer amplifiers. This gives the system thundering bass response, easily handling frequencies below 20 hertz. It's almost enough to set off your car alarm. It seemed like for many years it took Detroit a while to really catch on to the car stereo thing and for the power and the full fidelity of it. But boy, I tell you what, they've got some primo stuff coming out right now. You know what's interesting, actually, is there are a lot of people, a lot of people that I know, in fact, that started out in the high-performance aftermarket industry, and now they've been cherry-picked by Detroit, and they work for some of the OEM integrators. Today, despite the amount of outrageous aftermarket equipment that's out there, the control of the market is starting to shift back to the automakers. Systems like the Monsoon and Mach 1000 systems are aimed at the younger, sporty car market. But other market segments demand other features. And thanks to the explosion of onboard electronics, these consumers can have pretty much anything they want. While minivan owners may not need a full kilowatt of power going to their speakers, they're looking for other features. We get a lot of people, you know, Susie Shocker Mom coming in to get video system because to keep the kids quiet, they come in and they see the possibilities and it's, you can see that, that light bulb go off above their head and all of a sudden they, you know, they need more. They want this and they want that and they want wheels and they want DVD, they want video game. Um, and, and that all comes from, you know, them finding out that, oh, this is actually available. For every parent who's ever heard the endless chorus of, are we there yet? 
The OEs have come to the rescue with DVD players and display screens, and riders use them for everything from movies to games to programming other parts of their rolling entertainment systems. What started out as a tinny little AM receiver hunting through the static for the one radio station in town is now Mission Control, right there in your dash. And it's getting even more crazy. Stick with us, and we'll go there when the American Muscle Car returns. These days, you don't have to look beyond the dashboard to witness what's happening in personal electronics. Today, thanks to all these goodies, your drive can be more enjoyable than just reaching the destination. The 11 screens, three are 16 inches. The rest are all six and a half and seven and a half screens. There's uh, nine DVD players and two VHS. The car itself has three 1400 watt bosses and one 1200 watt boss. So the total is 5800 watts. Nothing runs off the alternator. Everything's got its separate charging unit and everything's got its separate power unit. Maybe the biggest advance in mobile entertainment lately has been the development of satellite radio. Satellite radio is good for people that, that do a lot of traveling and like to listen to you know similar thing or they have a gazillion genres of music on there. Everything from comedy to rock and roll to rap to R&B. If someone were to travel a good portion of their day, I think that would be a, a very good investment. The quality, the quality is, is CD quality. I mean, it's, it's good stuff. It really is. Direct communications with satellite, so you can put one of these things in your car and drive from Los Angeles to New York and never change the station. Uh, XM satellite radio, Sirius satellite radio, fabulous. I. I love that. I, I don't hardly purchase uh, CDs anymore. There's so much variety on, uh, on the satellite distributed sound that that's what I listen to. Sirius is different from traditional radio in that it takes all of the good, none of the bad, and then creates everything you wish radio could be. It's our philosophy at Sirius to provide music wherever the consumer will want to have music. So we actually are offering a wide variety of products here as early as today, such as we have products like the piece that you see here, which is a plug and play unit. This plug and play unit will actually be movable from the car into your home, into a little caddy that will allow you to listen to it either in a car environment or in the home environment. XM radio, satellite radio. You can listen to the same station, your same type of music, no matter where you travel in the United States. If you like news, you program your own news station. If you like country, you push XM, you have country music. There are so many different options for XM. You have units you can bury. You have units you can take from car to car, car to home, car to boat. There is definitely a buzz out there about satellite radio. I think a lot of the people are, are looking for an alternative. If they don't like what they hear at their local radio station, that satellite radio offers a huge difference. And one of the big benefits are a lot of the stations are 100% commercial free. So you subscribe to the service, nominal fee, and uh, you can really enjoy a lot of the type of music that, that you may be looking for that you can't always find uh, on, on your radio dial, which are readily available through satellite radio. Some of the units you can, if you hear a song, you can press the save button and the next time that song's played on any of the hundred and some odd stations, it'll notify you and say, hey, your song's playing on channel 52 or whatever. And it's an amazing, the technology and the size that they've gotten these things into now. But the more elaborate and attention getting all this dashboard gadgetry gets, you have to wonder, will the driver actually have enough attention span left to actually drive the car? But wait, hold up, reality check time. Systems like these are about as common on the road as 1,100 horsepower, nitrous-fed, big block street machines. Sure, they're out there, but not very many people use them for their daily drivers. The vast majority of cars on the road today have the good old faithful factory sound system still belting out the Boston and the Van Halen. Generally, the, the biggest thing that's lacking from a factory sound system is any type of bass. Sometimes at the mids and highs that are installed in these vehicles, we do a lot of BMW, and they put a Harman and Kardon system in there. The mids and highs are fairly decent, but the vehicle doesn't have any bottom end, any bass. So very common we add bass to that type of sound system. So if you sprung for a top-of-the-line groove machine when you bought your new car, but now you're ready to kick it out a little bit, 
The nice thing is, these integration systems are an inexpensive way to add performance and flexibility to a basically good system. Hey, the whole point of onboard entertainment is to tailor your system to your own taste, right? But maybe the best part of this sound revolution, at least for muscle car fans, has been the advance in stock appearing dashboard technology. So don't touch that dial. Hey, we had to say that at least once in this show. The American Muscle Car Special Report, Rolling Thunder, will be right back. <laughs>